Okay, so I know it's been a little while since I made a video. Uh, finally got my block back. It's been a little bit too long. I didn't want to wait that long. Uh, we're into February now, so definitely a little bit unexpected, but whatever, I don't care. At least I got the shit back. It's ready to go back together. I have all the parts I need to get this thing back on the road as far as I know. Maybe a couple little nuts and bolts here. I might have to run a Canadian tire or something and grab some shit at some point, but um, everything is ready. So I got a bunch of aftermarket stuff that I'm gonna put in. My rings have been gapped as well for me. Um, and so this should I shouldn't have to do anything there and then uh, it's gonna be a couple of videos first video I think is just gonna be me putting the, the crank <laughs> putting the rod bearings on the crank putting the crank in the block halves plastic gauging it and I know some people say "Ooh, don't plastic gauge it but it says right in the Subaru manual to do that so that's how I'm gonna check it um, and then we're gonna next video after that we'll probably I'll probably put the pistons in and then the video after that we'll be putting the heads on and then putting everything else back on and then maybe another one to get the engine back in the car I'm not really sure how I'm gonna break it up but that's pretty much what's gonna happen it, putting it back together is gonna be more time-consuming especially since I have to film this stuff set up the camera and all that stuff I know it doesn't take people very long but since I'm doing this it's just gonna be a little more time-consuming but I'm doing this for you guys, so I'm just gonna suffer for, for everyone else's sake. So I got this thing all pulled apart now and I'm checking the crush of the plastic gauge. This stupid thing is going to focus. So that's the plastic gauge there after it's been crushed and it's running at about uh, 0 0.0015 for clearance which is on the high side but all the race engines that I see being built are running, I did a quick Google, they're all running um, between 0.15 and 0.18 or even more. Uh, this engine is going to be driven pretty hard so I'm not too concerned. The maximum spec is 12, 12 thou, um, but 15 thou on a used engine, used crank not too much to be concerned about and I know a lot of the aftermarket high performance bearings uh, will give you a little bit more clearance anyways so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this thing together the way it is even though it is a little bit on the loose side it's not any cause for concern for me
so long. <laughs> oh my god, can you wipe any slow? <laughs> Shivering at the door and I'm like, come on, say something. <laughs> You've got this, sweetheart. Focus on number five, because that's your thrust. Okay, I had a red cap for this when I showed up. So one of you two came over here and lost your cap. So unfortunately I didn't get to show uh, putting the two block halves together after you put the sealant on, but my camera died, which kind of sucks. So. I thought it was recording, but it wasn't. So this is it back together. Uh, after you put the, tighten up the case bolts and stuff, there's actually a couple more hidden ones. There's one here, there's one here. Um, and then all these down the side here. If you get the manual for, the, for this engine, then it's actually pretty easy to follow along. Uh, one note on this engine, these two don't get the 90 degree torque turn. These are torqued to, a, to I think 30 foot pounds or 38 foot pounds or something after you do the 90 on, on the rest of it. So that kind of threw me off when it told me to do that in the manual. But uh, yeah, make sure you put oil on your threads when you're putting stuff back together. I was putting ARP uh, fastener assembly lube which is also pretty good um, for all the bolts and whatnot. And basically what's left is to just put the pistons in and then put these caps back on, cover it all back up, and then just start putting it all back together. Um, I have a Killer B catch thing, windage tray. Uh, supposedly it helps people. Um, it also looks pretty cool and it didn't cost very much. And then also this uh, pickup. I'm not sure what the benefit if there is a benefit of this pickup, I know that it's stronger and they tend to break, but I don't know if there's a, an oiling benefit to just having this here. Um, I don't know if it sits deeper in the pan or if it, f if it flows better or something like that, but if somebody wanted to comment on that, then they very well could. So just gonna continue on, start putting stuff back together and putting the short block back together and then we'll put the heads on and that's pretty much it. So these are the Mali power pack pistons that I purchased for this motor build. The reason I went with these is because they're low expansion pistons that can endure a lot more heat cycles and um, don't expand as much as the typical forged pistons, but they are still much harder than the OEM uh, Subaru pistons because the Subaru pistons had so much silicon in them so that they didn't expand. It made them very hard, but also very brittle. So it's like glass, basically. Uh, these ones have much meatier ring lands than the Subaru pistons, which I have here. Um, definitely a little bit thicker ring lands, and they seem to have this uh, extra groove in it. Um, I'm not sure why, but I'm sure it has something to do with uh, it could be an anti-detonation thing. I've seen some pistons advertised as that. Um, and like I said, they're, they're a harder material. These are good for probably at least 400 at the wheels in this motor. Probably maybe not pushing it that far, but since this is a daily driven vehicle, that's why I went with these. It'll give you more life from your engine because they don't expand as much. I think the only other brand that did it was uh, Wiseco and Cosworth, I believe the Wisecos were really hard to find. I think that's the one it was. And the Cosworths were double the price, but Mally actually owns Cosworth. So these are the same pistons, essentially. There's no difference and they're definitely a lot cheaper. So also the compression ratio is a lot closer to the OEM, um, the OEM 8.5 to one. Uh, Subaru is 8.2 to 1 or 8.5 to 1 depending on which motor but I didn't want to go with the other ones because the other ones I found 
like I said, if they were Wiseco or JE or whatever, they were uh, nine to one, which is a little bit much. I'd like to be able to run it on a standard tune and, and so I can get it to a dyno and get it tuned that way or get it e-tuned temporarily. But it'd be a lot harder if I had these crazy compression ratio pistons put in there. Um, anyways, so what we're gonna be doing is putting the sir clips in there's an arrow pointing to the front so i just have to put them in like this since i'm working that way uh, the sir clip is going to be on the inside so what you want to do is install this one before you even put the piston in the block because you can't do it after that i mean maybe you could if you had really long pliers or something but better to just do it beforehand So now we're ready to put the pistons in. We got the rings on, that's all done. You just wanna take this piston ring compressor and just unravel it, push down the tang or whatever. This is a Lyle one. You can find out at Princess Auto or whatever. And uh, just expand it, get it oiled up inside and then you put, the, put it over your piston and then you just tighten it up and all this does is compresses the rings so that you don't have to uh, try to, you don't have to worry about getting them caught on the block is all this does. So you just turn it like this and it'll compress the rings right close to the piston and then you can slide them right into the, right into the bores. And there's also little tangs at the bottom here. You want that to be at the bottom so that when you put it in, um, it'll just stop against the edge of the block and won't try to push this thing into it. So I think that concludes this video for now. The pistons are in the block and everything is ready to go. I got the plugs back in. I didn't record that because it was pretty late and the camera died. And uh, everything is turning good. It's just go time. I'm just gonna keep assembling things, put the oil pump and all that stuff on. I think I'm gonna paint the block to make it look nice and uh, that pretty much concludes the first part of the engine reassembly. I don't wanna make some massive long video that's every single part all in one, cause then it would just be 
I don't think people would watch it, so. Uh, basically, just a summary. Make sure you get your rings um, in the ring compressor good. You don't want to catch the rings as you're popping them into the bores. Make sure the clips are seated properly. Uh, a couple of them, when I put them in, they went in and it looked like they were in, and then I just kind of poked them with a screwdriver and then they clicked into place even better than they were. So just make sure that you uh, keep that in mind. And then when you seal the two block halves together, don't go too crazy with the sealant because it will go into the block and then you have to, there was one spot where we put a little too much and uh, some of it kind of went out into the block kind of a lot. So I just grabbed it with twe uh, pliers and just pulled it out of there. But for the most part, we, we were pretty skimpy and it didn't make a big mess. But some people overdo it and then that can lead to problems. So that's pretty much it. Um, next video is going to be putting everything back on the block and then putting the heads on. So thanks for watching. That's all there is to it. So. Thanks for, thanks for sticking around throughout this build. I wouldn't be recording this if nobody was watching, so thanks. <laughs>